will be a real blessing to you. We're sharing from Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. You enjoyed uh, my friend from Sri Lanka last week. And you enjoyed uh, Kinwa the other, the other Sunday. Um, fantastic. It was really, really lovely. Hallelujah. Let me read to you again and then we'll, we'll share some thoughts that God has laid in my heart for us as a church. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Father, we, we pray that you will minister to us, that your word come alive to us, may be meat to our hearts, our spirits, our souls. We honor you today. We give you glory and give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's always great when God is moving. And there are seasons when God will turn up and uh, things are doing very well and we don't have to uh, labor to get to church. You, you just love getting to church. You just want to be with the people of God and be in the presence of God. But sometimes like the time of Habakkuk, it doesn't seem to motivate us so much. Because things don't seem to go the way we think they should go. And it looks like, uh, like what he shares, the fig tree does not blossom, there's no uh, figs, there's no uh, grapes, there's, no, there's nothing on the field. And then he said, the, the flock may be cut off from the fold. Some translation says, the sheep are destroyed on the field. So there's nothing. There's nothing in the fold. The fold uh, is often the enclosure where in the evening and uh, when the shepherd brings the flock into this enclosure, they are everywhere in the Middle East. They are like hedges and you've got a, an opening and they bring them in to rest them for the night. And the shepherd sleeps as the door to the enclosure. Jesus said, I am the door. If you want to come in, you come through me. If you want to go out, you go out through me. If you jump over the fence. So that is called a fold. Fold also speaks of uh, the gathering of the animals. But that particular enclosure is called a fold. And the Bible says there's nothing in the fold. The shepherd is unemployed. The fig tree, the, the, those that, that work in the, in the vines and the figs are unemployed because there's no figs, there is no olives, there is no grapes, there's no animals, and there's nothing in the stalls. The flock often speaks of the sheep and the, the stalls often speak of the ox or the, the cattle. There's nothing. And it's, everything is doesn't give you any hope. And here he says, I will rejoice in the Lord. Now that's very, very illogical. It's not, it doesn't make sense when everything's going wrong, when there's nothing to put your hope on, and yet a man sings the praises of God. It's illogical praise. Is senseless thanksgiving because most of us live by our five senses like the Samaritan woman who had five husbands now living with her a man now six men and some of us in our Christian walk we live with our five husbands and then when our senses don't tell us anything we just live we just we just shack up with somebody we don't, uh, we begin to lean on our understanding because where you see and what you're looking at does not give you any hope. 
It doesn't motivate you. So when the man is singing the praises of God, when there's no figs, there's no olives, there's no grapes, there's no food, there's no sheep, there's no cattle, nothing. And the man sings the praises of God. That's totally illogical and from our viewpoint is senseless. Hello? Hallelujah. And when you're praising God and singing His praises, rejoicing in the Lord, when it seems like God's on a holiday, hello? It takes faith to do that. So the prophet said to this particular individual who is totally barren, the prophet says, Sing, you barren. Not talking to the ones that are fruitful. He's talking to the barren ones. You have Hannah, a woman of grace, and Penina, which means uh, a ruby, you know, hard. And the hard one is fruitful, but the gracious one is barren. And it's difficult, therefore, to praise and sing the, the glory of God when things don't seem to be working out. Does anybody identify with that? Yeah. You know that God is real. You know that God is able. And you know that he can do it. But it doesn't seem like he's coming through. And it's not that you're not breaking through. You need God to break through. Hallelujah. So when David says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. I think he was, he was finding difficulty praising God. And he's commanding himself that bless the Lord. So wake up and bless the Lord. And then he told his soul something. He says, don't forget his benefits. Now, if you ask Habakkuk, are there any benefits you can see? He, probably, he will say no. And David is saying to himself, don't forget the benefits of the Lord. Now, I don't think that at that particular time, David was doing quite well. I think he was telling his soul to look back. You read Psalm 77, and the guy's in despondent. He said, where are you? And then he said to his son, then I remember. Yeah. Hallelujah. And David is saying, try and recall the blessings of God, the benefits of the Lord, who forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases who satisfies our mouth with good things that our strength which means that he wasn't feeling very strong our strength is renewed like the eagle so you have a guy like paul who's just being whipped and thrown into jail and then you wonder why god sent the earthquake because it wasn't coming from a church. The needs were not met. Their backs were bleeding. They had chains in their hands and their feet. And they were praising God. That's illogical. We often live with our logic. I want you to know that your logic will never work in an area of the miraculous. And sometimes we logically think our ways out of miracles because we think, well, hello? Are you all right? Logic don't work in the area of the supernatural. When a pastor was called to a Pray for this young boy. The young boy's thumb was crushed and 
it was bandaged up and the, the, the pastor prayed that the, the thumb would be saved. But they amputate the thumb. And he was really despondent. He said, God. The only problem is, if it is a problem, the thumb began to grow back. Now, that is not logical. And if you try to logically ascertain what happened, logic don't work in the realm of the supernatural. And God is a supernatural God. God is a miracle working God. You can't logically uh, uh, ascertain how God opened the Red Sea. So in the nature of God himself, he doesn't change. His character is static. He's everywhere at once. He knows everything. Some people think they know everything. Well, you don't. And here is this prophet. With devastation everywhere. And he said, I'm going to rejoice in God. So when Paul and Silas praise God from prison, it's totally illogical. It doesn't make sense. God began to tap his foot and the whole place just shook. I think God forgot temporarily that the earth was his footstool. So he was just tapping. And he realized there was no bass. So he sang bass in the earthquake. And the thing just, hello. Hallelujah. And sometimes in, in moments when things don't seem to be happening, it's a great day to praise the Lord. Why? Because God is worthy of our praise. It doesn't matter when or where. Now right there, in that we sang, uh, send revival to this land. Pour your spirit once again. Pour it from where? From heaven? He's not in heaven. He's here. Out of your belly shall flow rivers. Pour it out from you. Pour it out from me. Where two or three are gathered together in his name. The God of heaven descend. The government of heaven come down. And if anyone needed revival... It's where there's no figs, no olives, no grapes, no food, no cabbages. Uh, thank God, uh, no broccoli. <laughs> I'm going to get myself into trouble here. I will need reviving shortly. <laughs> but if anybody needed revival, it's this man. Because everything around him. There's no, there's no sheep, there's no cattle, there's nothing, there's no food on the field. And if anybody needs reviving, it's him. But he's not, doesn't need reviving. He said, well, there I rejoice in God, my Savior. I wish we as the church understand that. Because sometimes things in our lives don't make sense but we still need to give god praise hallelujah when you praise god in a time like that you praise god by faith but you also praise god in hope you're you're hoping for the field to yield fruit but it's nothing so you have to praise God in hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But hope fulfilled becomes the tree 
of life. And many people, sometimes you can have faith, but you've got no hope. You still believe God, but you've got no hope. And when you praise God in times of trouble, like Peter, like uh, Paul and, and Silas, like Peter when he was locked between 16 soldiers, they're going to cut his head off tomorrow, and he goes to sleep. I mean, I mean, what guy will go to sleep knowing he's going to be executed tomorrow? When the angel turned up to release him, he had to whack him at the side of the head to wake him up. He was just gone. <laughs> so when you praise God in moments like Habakkuk, you have to praise God in hope. Hope that God will turn up. Let me teach you something about hope. If you ever look at... Uh, Romans 8, it, this will help you, even if you miss the last series, this will help you. So tune in. Are you okay? <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? He says, we are saved by hope, but we don't hope for what we see. You don't hope for me to, to be here. I'm already here. It says, um, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience or perseverance. We hope for what we can't now see. And we wait for that hope to materialize. And we wait for that hope with patience and perseverance. But it says, what will save you right now is hope. But hope that you see is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for it? But we hope for that which we see not. He's probably hoping for some grapes. For some olives. For some figs. For some cattle. For some sheep. And he says, it's hope that saves us. But hope that you see is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he have to hope for it anymore? He's already seeing it. But we hope for that which we see not. And so do we with patience wait for it. Now, many of our hope is not godly. It's just, we just wish something would happen. Well, I hope something would happen. I'm praying and hoping. Well, that kind of hope, you'll be praying and hoping and praying and hoping. Because hope on its own. Hallelujah. Hope on its own. Is just a wish. But hope has to have a substance. That anchors it. And the Bible says. Faith is a. So faith and hope. Always go together. Faith grabs the reality of it now and hope waits for the reality to materialize in the natural. If you're hoping for healing, you have to believe God for healing now. But you hope for it to materialize. Hello? Are you okay? Say amen. amen. Now, have a look at Romans 5. And this will help you. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace 
in which we stand and rejoice in the hope. We have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope. All right. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Uh, how many are glorying in tribulations right now? We glory in tribulations. Now that's an attitude that is illogical. It's illogical because there's tribulation, but you're glorying in the tribulation. In everything give thanks. So even in the difficulties you find yourself in, and I find I ought to give thanks. In everything give thanks. I buried two friends just recently. They were both in their 70s, but both strong, wonderful Christian men. Trying to comfort their children and their widows. Those kind of things, you know, it's not easy. But we glory in moments where things don't go right. Like Habakkuk. It says, we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance or patience, and patience experience or character. The reason your character is built is because through patience, you experience the promise. You can read that again in Hebrews chapter 10. You wait for it to materialize and you wait for it with patience and when you do the bible says that will give you experience and it'll build your character why because what you hope for has become not just a hope but a reality because we wait for it with patience when patience does its perfect work, you shall be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So you wait for this hope to materialize. And then the Bible says, character or experience and experience hope. The reason you have hope for the pain you're going through now is because... You've experienced God in the past. And he gives you hope for the future. That's what David said. David said, bless the Lord's soul. And don't forget. Remind yourself of God's goodness. Who heals all diseases and forgives all iniquities. Satisfies every mouth with good things. That all our strength may be renewed like the eagle. Why? Because you've experienced God and it gives you hope for tomorrow. Are you alright? Can you have a look at uh, Psalm 77? I shared that before. Hallelujah. Are you all right? Verse 7, will the Lord cast off forever, and will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. 
He was looking at his situation and he said, Has God forgotten to have mercy? As the male, as a man with a nail scarred hand no longer has mercy in his heart. What's wrong? And then he said, then I remember the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God in past years and past generations. And his spirit was revived and hope turned up. Now the Bible says, if you have a look at, uh, I, I know I, I said I'll give you a study on hope. So if you have a look at Hebrews chapter, chapter 6. Verse 16. I'll be finished in four minutes. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> for men indeed swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is for them the, an end of all dispute. You know, it's like a covenant. You know, you shake hands. You know, the Bible says shaking hands is part of a covenant. When you clap, you don't just clap because it's a nice song. Clapping is a sign you are a covenant person. They strike hands. Strike hands. Not just high five. You shake hands. You, you strike each other's hand. And you strike your own hand. So when you clap, when you're singing, you're saying to the devil, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant woman. And I'm not covenant. We're not just covenanted to each other. We are covenanted with God. I belong to God. So you're, you're praising God and, and, and uh, actioning the covenant. But you're also telling the devil, you can't touch me because I'm a covenant man. We don't just clap for clap. So the oath for two men is settled when they promise each other and they strike hands through a handshake. Verse 17, thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel confirm it by an oath. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. You lay hold. Of that hope. That anchors your soul. And you walk through even though there's barrenness. No fix. No whatever. He says I rejoice in God. My savior. Hallelujah. That kind of hope. That's godly hope. That's not just a wishy-washy hope. That hope anchors our souls. Are you all right? Yes. Say amen. So, when you're praising God when things are not going well, you're praising God in hope. And the reason you hope is because you've experienced. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that experience gives you hope. And hope does not make us ashamed. Because the love of God is shared abroad our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And that hope anchors our souls. Hallelujah. And, and Paul said, if I'm in my body, I'm confident. If I'm with Jesus, I'm confident. I'm confident both ways. I'm confident here, whether I'm absent from the body or in the body, and absent from Jesus. When I'm absent from my body, I'm present with Jesus. And he says, absent or present, I'm still confident. Why? Because of that hope.
Are you all right? When, 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 when Abraham offered his son, do you think that was logical? I mean, if you look at it, we will think he was stupid. Something wrong with the fella. But everyone around, the Bible says the Canaanite was in the land. Everybody around was looking at this man whose God nobody can see. Now everyone can see their God and they, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters to their God. But they, can't, they can see their God. But this guy can't see his God. And they're watching. How's he going to live? So he takes his son to be sacrificed. Doesn't make sense. But he does it in hope. And he does it in faith. By faith, Abraham offered his son. And when he said to his servants, you stay here. Me and the boy are going to worship. He didn't say me and the boy are going to kill the boy. He said me and the boy are going to worship. Both of us. My worship, his worship. And we are worshiping this great God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask. This God that is Jehovah Jireh. Why did he do that? He's trusting in the character of God and worshiping, praising God in hope. Are you okay? Say amen. amen. The Bible says Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured. We don't have to give in to the environment. Our God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. We worship God. We praise God. Not Necessarily for what he does, but for who he is. And if God's talking to you, I'd love to pray for you. You can stand to your feet, I'll pray. And if you're watching at home, if some of what we've shared this morning has ministered to you, it's a wonderful day. Your hope doesn't have to be dashed. Your hope that can be the anchor of your soul. Lay hold of what God has promised. Hallelujah. Maybe you're watching and you haven't given your life to Jesus and want to give your life to him today. You can do that. And ask God to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins. And give you that hope that will never make you and I ashamed. Hallelujah. Father, we stand before your presence. We pray, dear God, that you will touch our lives and minister to us. I pray for each one standing and I stand with them. That, Lord, the circumstances of our lives will not uh, cause us to waver like the waters of the sea that are, is unstable. But in the circumstances of our lives, we'll lay hold of the hope that anchors our souls in you. That hope that will not make us ashamed because the love of God is shared abroad our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We stand by faith in the grace rejoicing in that hope. And Father, I pray that you will charge and impart hope afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. For those at home, for those here in the auditorium, Father, in the name of Jesus, breathe hope afresh into our hearts. Let that hope anchor our souls. Bless your people. As they lay hold of you. Thank you that your word is true. By two immutable things. Your word and your oath. And that is 
what you've given to us that we might lay hold of this hope that anchors us in times of difficulties and turmoil even when it doesn't make sense even when it's illogical we choose to praise you we choose to honor you we choose to rejoice in God our Savior hallelujah so bless each one standing families couples senior saints young ones married unmarried I pray dear God let hope come afresh in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah amen amen God bless you